Welcome to the Austin Coffee House. The award-winning Austin Coffee House. I'm David Arnsberger, your host this evening. Tonight we have a very special guest. Uh, we're going to talk about something new in the Austin community. Something very viable, very interesting. Uh, please stay tuned to listen to our guest this evening. Joy Poth Aleman will be joining us shortly from the Third Coast Repertory Theater. Back here she comes now. Hello, Hello Joy. Nice Thank you for joining me this evening at the Austin Coffee House. Great to be here. Let's start off, since this is something new and exciting, um, uh, of course we pre-record this show, so um, it will be uh, aired sometime in December. Um, as I understand, the Third Coast Repertory, Repertory Theater has already had their premiere season opener with Inherit the Wind. Right. Um, will that run through the December season? No. Um, Inherit the Wind closed after three weeks. Okay. And um, then in November on the, um, I believe, 11th, uh -huh. It's when we had the opening, because this is now, we're in right. December. It will be it's when we had the opening of Sonata, okay. Sonata Escondido, which is okay. a world premiere of a piece that was written by Manuel Zarate. It was commissioned by South Coast Rep in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And because we have, the, um, we have the play right here, and we have the season, and we had the option, so we went ahead and got to do the world premiere here. Okay. So that was very yeah. exciting, and it runs for four weeks, and if we're late in December, then we've already opened our Christmas show, and if we're before the 14th, the 14th of December is when uh -huh. we'll be opening our Christmas show, which is a piece that's company-generated. It's uh, a piece that will take the stories and the songs and the heritage of the performers and showcase um, that. Well, wow, so it'd be kind of oriented towards individual performers, right? It's a it's a formula format. Um, in Is the there same a title? Chris, songs of Christmas. Oh, nice. <laughs> songs of Christmas. Nice. And we'll get to hear what uh, what each of the the members of the company, you know, maybe they may not be telling their stories, but it will be from the stories that they generate. So it's a very organic piece, and and will change every year mm -hmm. with whoever's in the show. Interesting. So. Well, let's back up a moment here um, uh, to the history of the Third Coast Repertory Theater. Um, Emmanuel Zarate is the creator. Well, he's the artistic director, and um, Manuel comes back to Texas from having spent some time in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Well, all over, actually. Mm -hmm. He's been all over, um, but he most recently was, um, I believe, with the group in Seattle. Mm -hmm. and. Um, he came to Austin about three years ago, and uh, Michelle Yarashi welcomed him to town and produced um, a, a one of his plays, Kuka, which is mm -hmm. part of his Los Americanos. Right, um, I remember I guess it's that. Five Michelle pieces. was a guest on our show not was too he? long ago. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we miss him. Um, he sort of pushed the train a long time. Yeah, he's um, a great man. Absolutely, uh, Michelle premiered Kuka. Um, in his one of his like final shows in the in the, at the end of his season in a, I believe it was a May June kind of slot, mm -hmm. and um, Kevin Remington and I got to work on that show as designers. That's where we first met Manuel, and um, got to work with him. Jim Hartley was in that production. Mm -hmm. Andrea Osborne was in that production. They're company members also, and um, he went on to do some other production here, but had this idea of doing a multicultural theater here in Austin and uh, assembling a network of mm -hmm. other artists that he's familiar with and that's, that some of us know, we know other artists who direct and, and produce and to expand what I've always called the Texas circuit needed to have, which is an exchange with other regions right. of, of, okay, so now we have connections into South Coast Rep, now we have mm -hmm. connections into the group. We're going to be bringing in um, Tim Bond, who is one of the artistic directors of the Oregon Shakes, mm -hmm. the Shakespeare Festival, is going to come and guest direct. Jose Cruz Gonzalez is going to come guest direct, wow. which will give Austin 
actors because mm -hmm. we're not importing any actors in this company. Right. We're using local performers. We'll give them an opportunity to work with directors from other parts of the of the country, mm -hmm. to work with designers for the technical people here to work with designers from other parts of the country wow. and get those legs out. Yeah. To export Texas artists and import new ideas, and speaking combined of which, with a multicultural with a multicultural uh, reflection and, right. and community awareness that yeah. we're really committed to. So wow, um, that's that's great. It is yeah, some pretty I mean, exciting it's, uh, stuff. Yeah. It's something that uh, it seems like it's obviously needed, but uh, no one has uh, filled that gap. Yet. That's yeah, it's a niche that hasn't been filled, and I think yeah. what's really exciting as we do some of the the research and have, have continued to do it. We've had some interesting assistance from Michael Barnes, who pointed out at a meeting that I was at that um, percentage-wise, more people are attending live theater and dance performances in Austin than are going to hear music. Huh. So the demographics yeah. in terms of numbers of people and dollars spent and available dollars spent say that theater is a very important piece of the economy mm -hmm. in Austin. Mm -hmm. So we're here, we're working here, we're committed artists that work in our field and we want to move that perception forward so that the, the truth of it is reflected in the bed tax. The bed tax had a surplus Mm -hmm. of, I believe, more than $3,000 that they didn't anticipate that they had to get, you know, proportion right. out right. with that, um, those finances that they mm -hmm. do through the city um, offices. And if we're bringing in, if entertainment is bringing in that bed tax money, then something's working right. Yeah. Then we're yeah. working right. So it's, a, it's an awareness piece of Austin as a theatrical center yeah. for the region. Um, there was more theater, live theater in Austin, Texas in the last month than happened in Boston, which is an out-of-town place yeah. for New York shows. Yeah. You know, so we have a place. Why to do you think that is? I think some of that has to do with the education level of the community. I I've think. heard people say before that they, um, they thought theater was a dead art, that the only people that, that go to theater are actors or would-be actors. Mm. And if that were the case, right. I would say we have quite a few of those here. Right, today. right, exactly. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think that's what happens. Okay. Um, I think that the same things that happen in audiences in theaters are the same things that happen in audiences in, in um, live performance of music, mm -hmm. live performance of dance. Um, the exchange between them, yeah. In that black box. Mm -hmm. Everyone in that black box for two and a half hours is a community. Wow. They're laughing at the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're sighing. They're being amazed. They're moved to tears. Wow. And for a moment, it's all suspended. Yeah. And we go to that black wow. box to be moved. Wow. So wow. when we talk about community building, the arts have always been a link mm -hmm. to have people of very different backgrounds come together and have a, have a human experience. Right, right. And I know as a musician, you certainly have seen plenty of different oh, kinds of folks yeah. in the audience. It's cool, no yeah. problem. And well. I think that educational moment is what live theater and live performance has mm -hmm. that opportunity to do. Right. You know, it's that right. link. So yeah, it's, it's um, you know, I, I can uh, recall gigs with 13,000 people out there that I'll never forget, and I can recall gigs with 25 or 30 people I'll never forget. Right. And then hopefully I won't be able to recall some of the ones I don't want to recall. But <laughs> yeah. I'm sure we yeah. all as performers, actors, musicians, whatever, have suffered uh, some of those. As, it's uh, all in the moment. <laughs> um, uh, this is fascinating. Let's expand here. Let's talk about um, location, first of all. Uh, where is this uh, Third Coast Repertory Theater located? We are currently in residence at the American Institute for Learning in their John Henry Falk Theater space. Which is? At 4th and Brazos at 204 East 4th Street. Good location down there. It's a the great location. Thriving warehouse district. Absolutely, absolutely. Lots of walking traffic. And we're, um, we're constantly looking for that angel in the form of a banker that will let us use their parking garage. <laughs> we right. haven't got that one yet. Right. But we're looking. Valet parking. Yeah, well, valet parking, um, more than anything, uh, 
the thing that keeps the city vibrant is the business of having people walking around downtown. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're really delighted to be a part of that. One of the things that doesn't happen in other cities in the South in the same way that it happens in Austin is that every weekend something is happening downtown right. and people come into city center. Mm -hmm. um, there are people who don't, but right. quite a few people right. do, and they're not just teenagers trying to find a way to sneak into a bar. Right. You know, right. there there was a wonderful thing with the basketball, you know, three on one. The hoop it up the thing. The hoop it up thing. Amazing. It was an amazing thing. I I really loved that, and had to kind of wind my way around them to get to the theater to mm -hmm. do what I needed mm -hmm. to do. But it was great to see people downtown, people that I hadn't ever seen downtown. Right. You know, right. were downtown and hanging out and checking it out, walking around. And um, we get a remarkable foot traffic and have been looking with some other nonprofits, some other theater groups about doing a sidewalk sale, yeah. or a warehouse, warehouse yeah. sale to just yeah. get some more awareness, get some more folks, you know, down, looking it over, mm -hmm. seeing what's going on. So the John Henry Falk space is an old warehouse that a month ago was an old warehouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, mm -hmm. That was it. And now we have... Um, Thanks to Richard Galbraith and Galbraith Construction, um, they donated the materials for the platform and um, Habitat for Humanities wow. um, helped us with um, carpeting and paint. Nice. And, um, That's nice. Oh, yeah. We've nice. had some remarkable partnerships in Did this project. Did you have project. to qualify for Habitat for well, Humanities? Well, it was camera. about it was about getting on the phone and yeah. asking folks and telling them what we're doing and what the dream right. is. Right. And, um, by being in residence at the American Institute, we have this opportunity mm -hmm. to do some exchanges and training and workshops with their population, which are at-risk mm -hmm. teens. And our eventual home, where we're targeting to move and build with assistance from Express Aroma and Pepsi, mm -hmm. is to build a three to 500 seat house on the east side. Wow. So big doings that are like still sort of in the smoke work, yeah. and in the yeah in the so, fundraising and identifying uh, and explain to me what the american institute is the american institute for learning boy mm -hmm. i hope i get all of this right they are um a non-profit organization whose mission is to um and i know i'm not going to get their mission statement exactly stated correctly but i'll i'll we'll, we'll have a go at it their mission is to have a space where learning can happen mm -hmm. and families can get a leg up and to move people off the welfare rolls and into jobs and, mm -hmm. particip and mm -hmm. participating in the community. And so the po their populations are the populations who slip through the different cracks. Right. They have an amazing project going on there that's called Casa Verde, mm -hmm. which is a green builders program where they have kids building cabinets that are made of non-toxic, non-off-gassing, you know, green, you know, fitting right. with the green builders kind of program, that they're put it, that they're, they build them and then install them into new houses. Hmm. And the kids do it. The kids do wow. it. Wow. Kids so, at what age? Mm, I believe that they're 15 to yeah. 19, you know, yeah, in, the, right. in that range. Um, but I, I can't say for certain what they're right. lower or upper in. But the kids that I see around there are 16, 17. That's great. 15, 16, 17. Yeah, yeah dropouts. And they've, they're getting, they've got a program to get their GED. And they have a, um, a, a performance troupe called the Cultural Warriors that um, Dana Ellinger, uh, originally formed and I got to work with Dana about four years ago but I mostly came in contact with the cultural warriors when Kenneth Witherspoon Dr. Witherspoon was their leader and I came on board as an advisory person through my business which is Remington Sweeney Productions mm -hmm. and um, we do costume and wardrobe and support for film and theater and opera and we took on interns and brought interns into Cap City that was one of the things that Michelle mm -hmm. was, was willing mm -hmm. to do with us. And so with Remington Sweeney as the, the for-profit business venture and the nonprofit of Capital City, we were able to get Cultural Warrior students in as wardrobe interns and train them wow. to do that work. And the, the intern that we had um, for not KUKA but Later Life, which was two productions mm -hmm. later, um, has gone on to work with Flaco Jimenez on some of his, uh, one of his videos. videos. And yeah, so the, it works. Yeah. It, yeah. It's one of those linkages. And 
the most interesting thing for me is as you look at at-risk teens, as you look at cultural change, and that's all the business of theater. You know, we reflect the community, we partner with the community, um, we we applaud the community. Right. That with this constant reviewing that we're doing as a culture about what to do about teens, is it just takes one person, one right. on one. Right. One on one. The studies say all sorts of things, but as, they si as we sift it all out, what we're discovering is that one person. Yeah. And, and then you're hooked into being a participant with a capital P mm -hmm. as opposed to being housed right. by us, which, right. is, which is what we want. You yeah. know, we want everybody you know, out there with their voice and yeah. doing their thing. So. That's great. Let's talk about some of the uh, principles involved in this uh, effort. Okay. I mean, we, we've talked about Manuel, he's the... Uh, Artistic director. And the, uh, the, the uh, writer of the he's play. A, yeah, of Sonata Escondido. Right. Right, which I think we're going to be taking to Edinburgh to the festival. Wow. We are... In uh, Scotland. In Scotland for yeah. three weeks in August. Yeah. Man. Yeah, so That's we're real, ex great. real excited. That's great. Pepsi has uh, stepped up and said they'll underwrite the trip. Fantastic. So. That's sort of big That's doings. really like, something to look forward well, to. Well, yeah, it? and it's yeah. something that also will assist us in our other, you know, trolling for our... Will that be a whole cast it? that goes, or will the that just, cast. will that be like, like y'all do? Will he just go over there and direct? Oh, no, he's, in fact, cast. he probably won't go at all. Oh, wow. Um, because he'll be working on the next season. It'll be re right before the second season will open, yeah. and he'll probably be here directing. Mm -hmm. And Paul O'Connell is directing this production and he will probably go but definitely the cast would go and we would be not taking the set but building the set there wow so, um, that sounds like a blast yeah. huh? Paul O'Connell you mentioned is the producing director resident director right and he is he's is some he's something he is really yeah. something he uh, he's an amazing amazing man he has come down to us um, from Seattle also, mm -hmm. uh, via Maine. He spent, I don't know, the summer in Maine doing something, I'm not sure what, um, taking a break from all of it. Um, <laughs> he's, he has a tremendous, tremendous track record of taking small projects and, and with you know, careful planning and you know, s some strategic kind of placement with his ability to, to get grant money yeah. um, of moving them into the next two or three steps. And, Austin has really been calling for a major regional theater, and this company would like to help lay some of the groundwork and be a cornerstone right, in, right. in that move. So. Yeah, that's a, a real desirable uh, quality there to be able to get grant money. Anyway. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I've had some small success, but um, it's, uh, it's amazing. Paul and I went to... Um, it's out there. It's out there. Amazing. Oh, it's out there, and... And if you know the magic words and the mm -hmm. right numbers, it's real apparently real easy to get. We went and met with the NEA um, in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. You know, went down and and it was that moment for me of coming to age when I realized that I was in an auditorium with a whole bunch of folks that didn't know anything that I didn't know. Right. It was like, uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It's on the line. It's time to get to work. So yeah. you know, there's no big mystery to it. Art is work and passion and mm -hmm. and a lot of trust and and agreement mm -hmm. with the with the audience they they agree to come in and listen and you agree to do the thing right, you know so right. that's what that's what it is right uh cynthia alexander she is yeah she is the managing the, director mm -hmm. yeah yeah She's uh, formerly with the Austin Arts Commission. And she has she's for past chair of the Arts Commission. Kind of the Austin connection. There, she's a right? big Austin connection. Um, I see another name in here I recognize very yeah. closely, Patricia Percy. Yes, she's Patricia. a close friend of mine. Is yeah. she, uh, she's, I know she has a master's in, in directing. Is she right. going to be directing or she's, I, you she's know, such her, an excellent actress? It's hard her to passion is training actors at this right. point, and she's stepped up to the plate to lead our Actors Festival. Um, one of the things that we've done this season in our commitment to the Austin arts community is to, um, is to pull together an Actors Festival to celebrate the performer, and Patricia is leading that wow. um, as a facilitator. Mm -hmm. And I say teacher, and she'll say, oh, no, no, no. But mm -hmm. you know, Patricia. Um, and we've been able to grant everyone to 
to cover everybody's tuition that has nice. there were um, I believe 15 actors how selected. wonderful so yeah it's, uh, so it's like no you don't have to pay three grand this year yeah. next year yeah. but this year you know we, we're able That's to do that right. so we've been really blessed she's really that. a wonderful instructor I yeah. can I can uh, testify by personal experience yeah. she, she's very very good well and that's that commitment for us of the expansion of the arts the expand mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know arts expansion and we're doing the same thing with direct with a director's festival which if it all comes together the directors and the actors will get to team up and do some some workshop workout kinds yeah. of things that will get um, that will get some performance time how many plays are you planning on on uh, producing per year I mean six. it's nine six a year six six it's a full slot yeah right. so, yeah I'm voting for five, but I, I got outvoted. Right, right, right. <laughs> got outvoted. So, it, it, so you'll be right up there in in I guess competition with the Live Oak Theater and and well, is Capital City going to stay together? I don't know what they're going to do. They're I, still I looking hope for they space. Do. Yeah, they were looking for space before yeah. Michelle passed. Yeah. But. yeah, they were looking for space, um, and and space is space is tough. Yeah, um, yeah, especially in the in the prime locations. Well, yeah, I think that that's a pretty standard thing to happen, yeah. actually. You know, I mean, musicians and artists go in and do studios. Mm -hmm. That's what happened at the rail yard. That yeah. used to be, you know, yeah. warehouse space. Well, and the live oak got, got yeah. you know, they yeah. had to move, and, and the move seems to have been a benefit to them. They're right. in a much better location. They're in a better area. location. Um, I, the, um, I, I don't know, it's hard to, it's hard to know what... What happens with um, with movement from that intimate space into right. that kind yeah. of that shotgun, you know, proscenium thing that they well, have now? Yeah, so yeah but I think if it's in, in its inception is in the in the intimate space and it's successful, then it has a hardcore yeah. of, of followers and supporters That's right. that will That's hopefully right. uh, go along with it, and hopefully the the main draw wasn't the intimate space, it was That's the right. experience. And yes, the, and the work. Yeah, and the work yeah, and, the, and yeah. the talent of the artist. Yeah, and I think Don Toner is extraordinary in keeping um, in keeping. He's been that pretty stuff steady, yeah. Yeah, 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 he's, he's done been, a lot of work. He's been Hard very, work. Yeah, uh, Steve Fromholtz is a member of that theater. Right. He's, he's a good friend of mine. He's, he's always working on stuff I wish I was working on. Really? You know? I mean, he just had a role in Sweeney Todd as mm -hmm. the barber and yeah. He always gets these great roles, you know. He did, uh, he was the lead in Zorba the Greek, you uh -huh. know, and it's just uh -huh. really fun roles like yeah. that. So are you going to come in and audition for us? Well, you know, I'd love to. I, I've been kind of on a sabbatical here. Like like I say, I've been on a paternity leave yes. here, and, and I probably will be for a few more months. I think I'm going to be the designated Mr. Mom for a couple of months, uh -huh. at least through the holiday season. And uh, then once we get the kid up and around, he's able to mow the yard and cook dinner and all that stuff, well, I'll probably get out of the house a little more <laughs> so often. So that's when you're about, when he's about 10, <laughs> about 10 years. <laughs> 10 years? I thought it was more like six months. Oh, what do you mean? Uh, no, they're still slugs at six gosh, months. Gosh, <laughs> I mean, they sure are cute and they sure are fun. When do they grow up? Yeah. Too soon. Yeah, too soon, too soon. right. Yeah. That's what I hear. But, um, yeah. So is there anyone else we need to mention that's part of this fantastic... Uh, well... I mean, I'm looking here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I mean, I've got four pages here. There's like 20 people involved in this that's project. Right. It's wonderful. Right. It's I mean, great. do all these people get paid? Well, if they're working on productions... So any job openings <laughs> in here? We're in that lovely place as a new organization that if you wanted to write a grant and came in with grant money, you absolutely could be a paid Have staff. a position, you right, bet, right. You bet. Um, <laughs> the people that we're paying right now are production mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. We're paying actors. We're paying scenic designers. We're paying lighting designers. We're paying running crew wow. for the production. Right now, the staff is all... Um, we're currently calling it sweat equity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, a, a term borrowed from Habitat from, from humanity. humanity. You got right. it. <laughs> That's right. We're paying attention mm -hmm. to where we come from. I've done some landscape for them. Have I, uh, you, yeah, they're great. They're folks. great. It's a great, a great project. Uh, 
really is. Right, and they they really um, came on in a big way at a time that really made a difference for us. Um, and really what we are inviting everybody to do is to hang hang with us and watch us grow. Is there is there space for volunteer help here? Is there a, a opportunity for people to participate through auditions or? You bet. Absolutely. And, and will that be open call in newspapers, Texas, you yes. know? Yes. As a matter of fact, we did our first round of open call auditions this summer, and I was amazed because I have been in and out of the theater scene in Austin for a long time, mm -hmm. and I thought I knew a lot of the actors in town, and I discovered that I know some of the actors in town. There's, there's, there's a, a lot. There's a whole bunch. There's a lot. And I, uh, we absolutely are open. As a matter of fact, what I'm really pleased to report is that Inherit the Wind had actors from all ranges of, of awareness and training mm -hmm. w with their um, tools mm -hmm. as actors. There were some first time, some back to the theater having been away for right. years, right. and some constantly working folks right. uh, in that cast. There were 18 actors, I believe, in that show. Right. And um, they, they did it. <laughs> they did it. Yeah. And uh, we get to look at how people who are new to the mm -hmm. theater can have an opportunity to work and to learn and to do that along with seasoned actors can always learn something right in right. any rehearsal oh, yes. process it's, it's always it's, it's they're available acting is live that's so, right I mean, if, it's available for them to learn right. if they're willing to be present for it right. and that's the one that you can't make people do yeah. but you can invite them to the dance and mm -hmm. see if they'll show mm -hmm. up um, but volunteers, absolutely. In fact, we're currently continuing to look for house managers and ushers for those those folks who feel like they're not quite ready to do the bite for a ticket, but they'd like they to like do something to and involved, they want to come and yeah. see and do that kind of thing. Yeah, um, we're going to be crewing up in the in the fall for for a little of everything, and uh -huh. uh, there'll be classes and. I'll start, we'll great, pretty much great. full service community stuff. Are we down yeah. to two minutes? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a lot more subtle from this side. <laughs> right. Well, well, we'll project a number up on the screen, I'm sure, for folks <laughs> to get in touch with uh, wow. the Third Coast Repertory Theater if they're interested in becoming involved on That's whatever right. level. That's right. Um, and there's 25 mail slots if you don't get a live person. So please leave your name and number. We'll Mail slots? Is that like roles in the in the play? That are Those are like voice oh, voice, voice mail slots. slots. Voicemail slots. Voice I was slots. trying to say. Okay. Mm. Never mind. Is there anything else we need to touch on before we say goodbye? Well, I surely hope that you'll come to the show. Oh, I most definitely will. And I would love it if you would come and sing. Songs of Christmas would be a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful to have you come in and do a guest shot. Oh, I'd love to. to come and I, sing I don't know town. what I'd sing. Well, uh, something you know, Christmassy. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. That'd be great. Uh, <laughs> all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. I can't think of any other Christmas songs I know except for Hog Leg Swine. No way, that's New Year's. Well, the show might run right on up to New Year's. Okay. So you might get to do that one, too. Well, we'll look into it. I'd like to thank you very much, Joy, thank for being you. our guest tonight. This is Joy Poth Aleman of the Third Coast Repertory Theater. Check it out. New exciting uh, theater happening in Austin. And now, in the words of the immortal Harley Berg, Amigas y chiquitas, grosa und kleine Freunde, and big and little friends. Keep her running, flying, jumping, swimming. Support your local theater repertory folks because they're your buddies. This is Dave Arnsberger saying, if you see bright lights, if you see halos around bright lights, go to an eye doctor. Could be a sign of glaucoma. <laughs> Adios, buckaroo. That was a good show. Was it? Was it? Did we do okay oh, for yeah, 30 we minutes? Did great. We did great.